All right, well, I hope you're enjoying this. I, uh, it's really fun to get back and doing Greek after all these years. Today we're going to do a thing, um, and you're going to realize how incredibly close uh, Greek and Latin are in terms of the way they functioned. Um, today we're going to work on verbs, and today's going to be the beginning of, we're just going to call it like verb intro. Now, I'm going to show you something in the book, so we're going to go away from this page for a second. Um, in the book, it's going to be on page 20. Um, then you'll have to see the PDF number, but it's page 20 in the book. If I go to the book, you'll see it looks something like this. And at the top, uh, we have the vocabulary we did last week. Uh, just a review, blepo to see, gignosko to know, grapho to write. Of course, we get graphic from it. Didasco to teach. Um, you get uh, lumbano to take, lego to say. Luo to loose and echo to have. And we noticed last week that all of them end with this long O sound. So if you look, the next two pages of the book look like this and this. Um, this part here is a reference way back to the very, very early ancient style of Greek. And those were the verb endings. I could tell you this, that part of that is going to show up again in later chapters of Greek. Uh, as part of it, you'll learn right now. Um, but by the first century BC, and definitely by the first century AD, when we're talking about Koine Greek, um, it is pretty standardized. And what we're going to find right here in the forms of Luo are the basic Greek present active endings. So go back to our thing and let's draw it together. Um, so for this first part, we're just focusing on verb endings. So if we were talking about normal verbs, like in, in uh, Latin, we talk about uh, first uh, conjugation verbs. The present active indicative is built off of what they called, and what we used to call, the primary endings. And remember that from Latin. And what are the primary endings for and if you remember how we do this, I, you, he, she, or it, we, you, and they. Well, if you remember in Latin, we had, we drew it, and the comparison is crazy here. We had O or M, S, T, mus, tis, and so that's what that's how the Romans made their verb endings. What we're going to find is there's some similarity, not a ton, but in the first person, the sound is totally still there. So watch what happens when I take the, the Latin away and I put the Greek in. The Greek primary endings are O. Ace. Remember, epsilon yoda is a diphthong. A. Then, amen or omen. Ete. And usi. Oh, I'm going to make my e look like, less like a U. Usi. So you should take a little space here and copy these a few times for practice. Not the English, but the Latin, the, the Greek, excuse me. And take a few times and write this out, you know. O, ace, a, amen, ate, usi. Remember, the epsilon yoda is a diphthong, a, and the Omicron Upsilon is a diphthong U. So write them down three times, practice them as much as you need to to have memorized. And know this O ace A, Amen ete usi. Say it again O ace A, Amen ete usi. So here's what I'd like you to do you take that and you realize, like, what would it look like if I built it on a verb? So take any of the verbs that we just learned. I'm going to uh, elect to do 
graffle. So if I want to write I write, I'd write gra full. What would you write be? Well, every one of these you would take the I would take the stem and paste it in here. Okay, and look what you end up with. And you can do this with any verbs, and, and I, I'd say practice with all of them if you wanted to. O, grafo, graface, grafe, grafamen, grafete, grafusi. Now, if we had been, and again, we're trying to go quickly, so we're not, I'm not giving you the accents on how they would show up on this. Um, the gra accents would be uh, migrating. There's a, a rule of recessive accent and that you don't need to know it here. But just notice that if we see the word, and we're going to show you that in a minute um, in the exercises, you would have to uh, try to figure out how to uh, pronounce it with the stress, a slight stress, on the accented syllable. Now, practice that for a little bit. Pause the video. Um, and practice as much as you can. Then we'll go to the part B part of this, which is going to be the part that's going to turn into your homework. And really, we're moving. It's great. Uh, this book I've always loved because within a very short time, you're doing a lot of great work. So uh, pause it, start it back up, and we'll do the second part. Okay, you're back. Um, look now in the book again, and you've been practicing your endings, move to page 23, the or not, excuse me, 22. 23 will be vocab 22 right here. And it's paragraph or segment 23 right here. And there's these exercises. Um, and one of the really cool things is this book has, you know, it's very old school and it just believes in rote work. So if we get to page 22, you have to find the PDF page, but it's book page 22. We're going to do the exercises. And what I'd like you to do, um, do them all and then write, uh, submit it to me. And what we have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at the top. And then you have, and then this is in part one, and then in part two, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to do a few of these together, um, but I'd like you to uh, do, you know, and again, I'm uh, the way I'm grading this is very lenient. You're trying to, this is up to you to learn as much as you choose, um, but practice as much as you can or want in this. Um, but I would expect you to do at least 50% of the work that's here. So here's what we have. In the first of the examples, you're going to look at them here in the book, we have the word blepes, gignoskes, and lambanes. Ask yourself, who's doing that? And you notice each of these examples, someone, it's similar in the first ones, um, when you get to number nine, uh, like eight, nine, they keep on mixing other ones in to kind of throw you. So if you look at like uh, six, it's um, uh, didaskusi, lambanusi, luusi, excuse me. But then when you get to seven, it goes gignoskete, gignoskes, gignoskamen. So the same verb, different ending. Then in eight, Blepomen, didaskusi, lege, and then everything's mixed up there. So let's do the first three. Blepes, gignoskes, lambanes. Now, if you want, you could copy the word and then write the translation. I'm going to uh, do that for the first couple just so you can see how it works. And you could practice your writing. 
blep base. And I'm going to put the X on it, the way they wrote it. Well, what does blepo mean? Do you remember? Blepo. It's for the first vocab word. It's to see. Well, who's seeing here? You see. Well, the second word that they gave us today was gig no case. Now you are doing what? Gignoskes. Say it out loud, write it. It's to know, you know. Now, is that one person or multiple people? It's one, you're right. And then finally, the third one, lambanes. Is the ace makes it you. And what are you doing when you lambano? You take. By the way, that also can be receive. Um, okay, so do as many of those as you'd like. Then go to the bottom, and we end up with a few, oops, excuse me, examples that look like this. We are knowing, we see, we are seeing. So, You'd go here and just write write them in. How would you write, we are knowing? Well, all these are going to end with one ending. Amen. So, to know is what? Think about the word. Gignosco, right? Gig, gin, o. Now, what is we? We know. Gnosko men. Right. Now, uh, just for a little trick here, there's, if you wanted to put the accent in, one of the things that happens is uh, they have a rule of recessive accent. And what they're trying to do is they, they want to, you can only accent on the last three syllables. And so you would notice that the accent would go here. They want to push it back as far as they can. You don't need to know that, but do it. All right. Do as many of these as you'd like, uh, but practice it. Here is the lesson of the day. Learn your endings. O, ace, a, amen, et, te, usi. Practice these verbs. It's going to take you a while to do this. Um, practice as much as you can. I would suggest write out the word, write out the meaning, write out the word, write out the meaning. Um, do this, and uh, that's the majority of the work for today. Um, at the end of the uh lesson uh, if you want to go on to the next week's lesson the next week's lesson is going to begin with the vocab uh, in chapter four um, in your lesson four and in that one we learn noun endings so next week it'll be vocab chapter four if you want to get a uh, jump on that go ahead and then we go on to uh, noun endings we'll be making sentences uh, by next week if you'd like uh, if you want to do lessons ahead go ahead and do it and of course i'll uh, grade them and get back to you. Take care. Thanks so much.